Hello, welcome to Kate's Egg. Today I'm at Fairmont Hot Springs to attend the Montana Farmers Union Women's Conference, which is very exciting, and I'm here with Rachel, Violet, and Alice. Hello, Hi. welcome. Hey there. This is going to be so fun. We're so excited and we're really glad you could join us. Thank you, yeah. and it's very important to support women in agriculture. Absolutely. So that's why we're yeah. here. We're focusing on all that in rural communities this weekend, so. Yes. Yay. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. with Becca Skinner, a photographer and writer and tonight's keynote speaker. So this is very right. exciting. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here talking tonight at the Montana Farmers Union Women's Conference. I'm going to be talking about my connection to place through storytelling. So starting as a photographer, traveling pretty extensively around the world. And then I found my husband who had a farm and I never thought that I could love one place so much after just traveling. I'm talking about farming and how it's so important to know where our food comes from, like we were just talking about. Yes, so important. Food, fiber, feed, all of that, so important. Everything starts on a farm. That, I love that so much because that's true. Yes. Everything starts on a farm, um, including our connection to the world around us, right? Like. I think those of you who grew up on a farm, yes, you knew that you knew where your food came from, but I definitely was not raised connected to my food system and finding that now in adulthood has been this major source of joy for me. When people talk about this urban rural divide, I feel like there's just this big conversation in the middle that's missing. Yes. Like when you take the time to talk to people outside of agriculture and they have the curiosity and bring forth the the interest in hearing your story or my story or another person's story, you know, we realize that we have so much more in common than we might originally think. And you also do a lot of work with National Geographic? Yeah, so I was a grantee from them in 2011. And then I talk about a few more expeditions that I did through their various branches. I'm crossing my fingers that we get to work with National Geographic and do a farming or agriculture story next. That would be incredible. Yeah, it would be. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. And if you'd like to learn more about Becca Skinner, you can visit... Yeah, you can find me on Instagram. It's at Becca Skinner, or my website is BeccaSkinnerPhotography.com. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm here at the Montana Farmers Union Women's Conference with Caroline Nelson and Big Sky Caroline on social media, and you have the most wonderful platform, so oh, thank you. Could you tell me a little bit about your story? Yeah, so I came out to Montana on a cattle drive with my mom. I was 10 years old, and I'm from the East Coast. I, I really had no background in agriculture whatsoever, and that was really the first time that I felt at home, and I just cried the whole way home on the plane. <laughs> And she told me that one day I could come back and um, go back to that ranch and work for them. And that actually ended up coming true, which was kind of amazing. So I started working on that ranch as a ranch hand uh, from age 15, 16, and I'm 31 now. So I worked for them for a long time. Eventually went from being a ranch hand to a rancher myself. Um, I started a direct-to-consumer grass-fed lamb and beef um, company. And now we do all kinds of other stuff. We do experiences. Um, and then we have a line of ranch goods too, like soaps and lotions and all kinds of things. That's incredible. Your so story fun. is truly inspirational. Oh, thank you. It's been an amazing journey. <laughs> it's so nice to have, um, to share your story mm -hmm. and, and have people be able to relate to that and see the realness of agriculture and ranching and farming and how important it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and really trying to tell the story. You know, I came into ranching with a lot of preconceived ideas about what it was and farming too because I was had no background in it, I had all these assumptions. I mean, I genuinely thought that ranchers did not care about the land, which is crazy to me now. And I was, you know, years of being involved in the industry, I suddenly realized, it's like, I haven't met one person that doesn't care about the land. Yes. I, every single person cares that works in agriculture. I just couldn't believe how misinformed I had been. And I've actually, I think a lot of people assume that if they were to learn about our food system, it would be so much worse than they imagined. I had the opposite. I was like, our food system is so much better than I imagined. Yes. Not that it's perfect and not that there's not things that I would change, absolutely. Um, and I, I'm particularly in the livestock industry, so that's where I focus. Um, but I've been amazed at how much we all have in common. And I do try to educate and share my experience with the audience. 
so that they, it can dispel some of their misconceptions and their anxieties. And that's what's so fantastic about it is um, most of these operations are just family run yeah. and you're really just trying the best you can mm -hmm. for your family and also the community around you. So mm -hmm. I think sharing that story is also very important. Yeah, because farmers and ranchers are eating the food they grow. Exactly. They're not trying to, you know, make a product that isn't safe and healthy and delicious. We're just doing the best we can. Yeah. And there's definitely the other piece of this is consumers do have to vote with their dollars. You know, there's they may criticize certain practices, but they have to understand that that's in the in the name. They were also the ones who demanded cheap food. Yes. And so if we want certain things to be done differently, we have to be willing to pay for it. And that's that's tricky. <laughs> So I try and, and just show a balanced point of view and, you know, I'm a very small producer, but I'm also, you know, respectful of large producers and these are my neighbors and we have a lot more in common than we don't. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. This has been yeah. so wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you and for having me. If you'd like to follow Caroline, what yeah. your social media channels are. Yeah, so we are uh, online at Big Sky Caroline on Instagram and TikTok and online at littlecreekmontana.shop. That's amazing. Thank you so Thank much. You. It's been Thank incredible you. speaking with you. You too. Thank you. I'm here with Mariah Gladstone, owner of Indigit Kitchen, which is awesome. And I just did the breakout session at the Montana Farmers Union Women's Conference and learned all about teas. So this is fascinating. Yeah, I think this was a really fun opportunity for people to learn more about the native plants that already grow around Montana, um, learn additional uses for them, how to dry them, how to turn them into delicious and healthy beverages within their own homes without even having to drive to the grocery store. So yes. we had a really fun opportunity to make our own tea blends, but also to talk about some of the medicinal benefits of some of these foods and some of the other uses of some of these plants as well. It's absolutely incredible. I did raspberry, yarrow, and rosehip, and it's so, so fantastic. It's super fun, and I'm glad that people had an opportunity to take home their own little tea blends, and hopefully when they get home to be able to think of this experience again and to start looking outside at some of the plants that are growing around their home, and perhaps they can make tea blends again with those things as well. That's amazing, thank you. And what's your background? So I founded Indigit Kitchen in order to teach information about traditional indigenous foods. So That's incredible. There's, of course, so many foods that we have access to that grow indigenously, um, whether they're foraged foods or whether they're foods that native people have specifically bred for cultivation. And there's so many things that we can learn from not only the patience that it takes to breed plants over multiple generations, but also in these methods of sustainable polyculture planting, you know, planting our legumes with our corn and our squash so that we enrich the soil of some of the nutrients that the other plants are pulling out. And that's so important. It's so important. I think that it's important to talk about our soil health along with the health of our bodies. Um, and then of course, just the health of our communities, being able to establish food sovereignty, the yes. ability of our communities to feed ourselves. So I love talking about all these things and I get to do it with this really fun tool of food. We get to make fun recipes. That's amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it and it was awesome speaking with you. Yeah, thank you. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Mariah, you can visit. Yeah, you can find all of my stuff at indigikitchen.com or Facebook or Instagram or YouTube at indigikitchen or you can even find tea blends if you go to splitsuncreations.com. Awesome, thank you. Yaro, the entire part from the ground up is edible. So you can use both the flowers and the herbs to make teas. I'm here with Cheyenne Wilson, owner of the Native Cowgirl. So that's really incredible. And you were on the Women in Agriculture panel. So that was so awesome and very inspiring. Well, thank you so much. It was really an honor to be asked to come and speak today and to really uh, be on a panel with such uh, unique women with so many diverse backgrounds. It was just really fun. And great innovators in the agriculture industry. Definitely. I think Montana has a lot to be proud of for the women in agriculture and just all of the things in general that we have going on. And I just think there's a lot of strength there that can be utilized to, to grow agriculture in everyone's minds, maybe in Montana and beyond as well. And what is a little bit of background about you and your story? Well, I'm a fifth generation cattle rancher uh, born in southeastern Montana. And I actually left home after I graduated high school and went out to discover the world and lived in big cities for almost 10 years. And 
learned a lot about retail management. Um, I worked in a trademark law firm and just I learned a lot about business and how to conduct myself, but also really felt that pull back home to the land. Uh, so moved back home, eventually settled down, got married. Um, we have a 13-year-old son. Um, and being able to uh, take on the family ranch, so to speak, but yet make it our own has just been a real blessing. We, we own our own commercial cow-calf operation, and we also raise draft cross and half-draft horses. Oh, yes, that's <clears throat> amazing. Yeah, super fun. And so I started sharing about my ranch life back in 2013 with my blog, The Native Cowgirl. Um, and grew an Instagram and Facebook page, um, kind of a following about what life is like for a modern day rancher. Um, and so just uh, utilizing uh, different streams of income as well and, and helping people understand that no matter where you live, you can create extra business for yourself as well as helping other people. So. Yes, and there's a way to go direct consumer with your products, which I think is a struggle for a lot of farmers and ranchers and really connecting with your community and um, your end consumer. Yes. You have to know what your your mission is and what your yeah. voice is to the world. And you're right; every single person has a gift, and the world is waiting for that. You know, you are, you know, the the world is, you know, open and huge. But you can be that one person in the world that somebody is looking for. Someone needs to hear from you, or buy your product, or understand your story a little bit to maybe understand agriculture a little bit better too. So yes. Yes, and what's completely amazing about that is everyone is so unique. And to really find what makes you incredibly unique yeah. and then tap into it fully so that you can become the truest version of yourself. And Absolutely. that's the story people need to hear. It is. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. And it's been wonderful speaking with you. You're welcome. Thank you And I you really so enjoyed the Thank panel. You. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. What I found and what is really, really great for each of you in the audience or anyone watching is that we have the internet at our disposal. You have millions and millions and millions of people out there who know nothing about what we do. Everyone in here has a different skill set. You have something that you're really, really good at that somebody out there needs to hear. And so it really, it isn't about making things and selling things, it's about telling your story with the world. I'm here with Amanda Nig of Farm Fit Mama, so that's super exciting, and you were a keynote speaker and presenter at the Montana Farmers Union Women's Conference, which is awesome, and I really enjoyed your speech. It was incredible. Yes, yes, I um, got approached by them to talk about physical and mental health, um, especially within the agriculture community, which is really cool. And then we just did a breakout session on printing. So yes. That was fun. <laughs> that was really cool and very enjoyable yes. and challenging, actually. Yes. Um, the biggest thing with physical and mental health is a lot of people try to overcomplicate it, and it's something that can be easily co less complicated. Um, and so planking, for example, is something that anybody can do anywhere. Um, and so it was really cool to talk about that and the benefits of planking and then also go into the benefits of physical and mental health. Especially in the agriculture community. Yes, um, ag, uh, I shared this statistic um, in my presentation this morning, but in ag in the last two decades, societal rates have increased 40% within the agriculture community, which is one of the lar largest in the whole entire United States um, and Out of world. all the professions. Yeah, I'm trying to bridge that gap um, with something that I'm very familiar with, which is physical health. And could you share a little bit more about your story and farming background? Really amazing thing is like every single client in my program is ag. So it's, it's making that impact. And right now I'm working with about 450 ag-related individuals. So it, it's really cool to be a part of that experience. That's incredible. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Yeah, thanks for asking me. All the uh, entrepreneurs making money in my family are women. The men are the farmers. The women are the ones putting the food on the table. The stories resonate around the world. This is the same story. So rural women's entrepreneurship has a kindred spirit to it. So what I, I want to share is you're sitting on a fantastic opportunity for women's entrepreneurship for telling your stories here at this conference. And we're also one of the largest farm organizations that represent the family farm. We don't owe anybody any favors. We only represent the members and what's important to them. That's a big difference. But when I first started farming, Montana raised and processed 70% of our own food. You could go to your local grocery store in your local community, and our shelves were full of Montana food. Now my grocery store is closed. 
What about yours? And you have to drive damn near an hour away, some two, three hours, to get our food from a corporate monopoly. And, you know, in the case of beef and pork, we don't even know where that food comes from. That's, that's a problem. But through education, the consumers are paying attention right now. And through education, we are able to get through to them. Now I'm here with Rachel on the last day of the Montana Farmers Union Women's Conference, so that's super exciting. Yes, we had a wonderful weekend gathering with all sorts of wonderful women connecting, building community, and we're really looking forward to the year ahead with sustaining these relationships and helping people uh, reach their best potential, the best that Montana Farmers Union can. So Kate, what was your favorite part of the Women's Conference? I would have to say the whole event was so amazing, so thank you so much for hosting it, but my very favorite part was the Women in Agriculture panel and all the inspiring leaders. Absolutely, yeah. It was so amazing to hear from these women in different areas of the state and their different ag operations, but also how they're just helping and being parts of their rural community. So, yes, absolutely. absolutely incredible. Yes, definitely. Thank you so of much. Of course, thanks for coming and thanks for being here with us. And it was so great again to connect with you. And thank you for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Yes, definitely. Bye. Bye.